Professor Ray here, and welcome to another episode of Inventions That Change the World. And after we do this uh, introduction, we're actually going to cut over and I've got an experiment you can perform at home. And I think you'll find that pretty cool and pretty interesting. But today we're going to talk about plastics and who doesn't use plastic and use it every single day. As a matter of fact, right here I have some plastics. But let's talk about chemically. What are plastics? They're called polymers. Poly means many and mer means unit. So they're composed of many units. And what they start out as are what are called molecules or macromolecules. And that is the unit. And an individual one of those macromolecules is called a monomer, one unit. And when you chemically react them, they chain together, they repeat the units and become what are called polymers. So um, that shows up in the names. We're going to talk about some of these and I'll give you some examples right now. The first one are called polyamides and that's a plastic that's used to make things like the bristles on a toothbrush, polyamides. We have polycarbonates and that's used to make things like DVDs and CDs, polycarbonates. We have polyethylene and that's kind of like the bags that they have at the grocery stores, polyethylene. We have polystyrene. That's like materials used to put food in. We then have polypropylene. That would be like the caps on top of drink bottles, polypropylene. We have polyvinyl chloride or PVC and that's typically what's used in piping that plumbers use for houses. We have polyurethane and that's used for coating surfaces. They hardens up to form like a plastic-like finish for waterproofing and to make a surface shiny. We have polyvinyl lidine chlorides. That's a mouthful. What that basically is is like saran wrap or the kind of wrap that you use to stick on cling wrap on top of food products. And what we're going to make later in the experiment is a kind of plastic you can make at home and it's called casein plastic. And I made a piece here but we'll go ahead and I'll show you the recipe for how you can make it. It's one of the earliest plastics that was ever made. So we see the term poly in everything. Polyamides, polycarbonates, polyethylene, polystyrene, polypropylene, polyvinyl chloride, polyurethane, polyvinylidene chloride. So we see poly, poly, poly. So these are polymers and that's, that's what we're really interested in. So the first plastic was actually invented in the mid 1850s and it was um, Alexander Parks. He was a British metallurgist. He studied metals but he developed the very first plastic and he took cellulose, treated it with nitric acid and then took that treated cellulose mixed it in an alcohol and it formed a clear liquid that he could pour and that liquid would harden up and form a clear plastic and he found out that he could add some different colorings to it and he actually used it to make um, a false ivory. But one of the things or two of the things actually about it had two weaknesses. One is it was subject to cracking so it was not going to hold up as like a container for food and probably more important it was very highly flammable could catch on fire. And that material he invented was called Parkinsite. And what's interesting about that is not so much the plastic but he exposed the kind of chemistry between monomers and polymers and how to make this work. And then the people who were chemists saw what he had done and they rapidly expanded the industry of developing new materials using plastics. So what we're going to do is an experiment on how we can make our own plastic called casein plastic and I'll have to read my list because I'll have the list appear over here to my side of what you'll need. You will need eight ounces of milk, you'll need a micro -safe, microwave safe bowl, microwave safe bowl. You'll need four tablespoons of vinegar. Um, prefer white vinegar but you can use apple cider as well. I've used both making this kind of plastic. You'll need a wooden spoon. You'll use that to stir uh, the warm liquid together and also once we get rid of the liquid and leave the plastic behind you'll use it to squeeze liquid out of the plastic. We're going to need a strainer and that's what we're going to strain the plastic out of this material with. You'll need a plate, a ceramic plate. 
does not have to be big. It can be one of the medium sized ceramic plates and you'll need a bunch of towels because what's going to happen, there's going to be liquid left in this plastic and we're going to basically use the towels to get the liquid out. So if you can gather those up, I'll go by through a step by step procedure and we'll take a break right now to give you an opportunity to collect those materials. So here we are, I'm back. I have my eight ounces of milk and I put it in a microwave container already. I brought this bowl, I should have mentioned that this will be useful when we strain the plastic to give me something to catch the liquid that's left over. I have my four ounces of white vinegar, a wooden spoon, a strainer, I have my plate, and I have some towels. What I've done is actually put one towel already on the plate, that'll save me a step later, and we'll use the rest of the towels for helping to blot out. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take this to the microwave, I'm going to heat it for about two minutes. This is step one. Take the milk, heat it for about two minutes. Here's the trick. Don't let it boil. You want to get it very warm, almost hot, without boiling. That, that's kind of a key element here. So we'll go ahead and microwave that and then we'll come back and we'll start mixing things together. I'll zoom in a little bit closer so you can see what's going on. So here we go. I have this milk here. It's, it's quite warm. I did it for two minutes in my microwave and it is very warm. And I have my vinegar right here next to it. So I'm going to go ahead, pour the vinegar in, then use the wooden spoon to mix it. So in goes the vinegar. We'll use the wooden spoon to mix it. And I don't know if you can see it, but we're converting these monomers in the milk to a polymer and it's starting to curdle up in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do this for about two minutes. So we'll fast forward and get you back here in two minutes after I've had a chance to stir all this together. Now we'll go ahead and get started with the process of straining the casein from the liquid. If you look close, you might be able to see some liquid here and then this residue at the bottom, which is the casein material. So what we'll do is take this bowl and I'm going to strain it out, put the strainer in, and then pour this in. And then I'll raise it up and you can see there's liquid dripping out and we have this casein which is our plastic. This is the polymer left inside this, this strainer. And I've got it mashed up there pretty good. Take the spoon, keep it going. We just want to try to get all this out. We're not going to get all of the liquid out right now. That's what the rest of the process is for, but to the extent possible, we want to get that out. Now we'll go on to the next step, which is wicking the rest of the material out. So now we'll take the casein. I will dig it out and I'll put it on these paper towels. Scrape as much out as we can get. I'll move this bowl out of my way. Now we have the case and sitting on the paper towel. So I'll take another towel and we'll go on top and start slowly wicking it out. And you'll see it picks up a lot of the liquid out of there. I'll take some more out. Take another towel. I'll flip this over because the bottom towel is already pretty much soaked. We'll wick some more out. And 
So we've got the case in just about the way we want it. And then finally I'll take one piece, put it here, and what we'll do is go ahead, put this here, we'll flip this over, and we'll leave it sit here for about 30 minutes. And then what I'll do is I'll come in, pick it up, and roll it into a ball. And uh, we'll come back, let's fast forward 30 minutes, we'll come back and then we'll show you how to mold this to make something out of the case in plastic. So here we are 30 minutes later, I'm going to take this casing out that we created and I'm going to start mashing it together, trying to form it. It's cooling off right now, it's a little bit tacky, a little bit soft, but it seems to be coming together, working together quite well. I'm making this nice little ball out of it. And what we're going to do is I'm going to smash this out into a sheet and I'm going to try to cut some buttons. Casing used to be used to make early buttons. Make the buttons, let them harden up, then they could actually drill holes in them and paint the buttons. So one use of the early uses of plastic and we still use plastic for buttons today. So let's go ahead and zoom in and I'll show you how we're going to flatten this out and make our buttons. So what I'm going to do, I put some napkins down, I'll take this piece of casing plastic, I'm going to go ahead and flatten it out. I'll flatten it out first on the side, then I will put it here, I'll put my hand on and try to smash it flat again. All the moisture is just about out of this plastic so it's going to be a little difficult to work with if I let it get too dry. I'm going to flip it right here. I'm going to grab a piece of PVC pipe actually and use this to help roll it out even more. Let's see what we have. There we have a nice piece of casing cut out. I'm going to bring over a piece of cardboard, set my casing plastic on that, take a hole cutter and start stamping out a series of little buttons. Let me stick my finger in. There we go. There's one button. Take the little edges off. There is two buttons. This will be three buttons. Four buttons. Five buttons. Let me go ahead and mash this together. See if we can recover just a couple more buttons out of this. Just to give you an idea of what eight ounces of milk casing will do. I'll put it back here on the napkin, smash it out, lay this over, take my piece of PVC, roll it again. Roll it this direction. Slide this back, take our piece of casing, put it back down. Let's go one, two, and three. I think that'll be enough for this experiment. So there we have it. We need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got eight buttons out of that. I could probably squeeze one or two more out if I want. That was out of eight ounces of milk.